Spiller starts a new painting. Building up text on canvas is a process he's familiar with, and yet it's work which demands huge care and concentration. He's decided on the main body of the words, but then they have to be placed perfectly before the letters are stenciled. In a painting, you put yourself into it, which is what I've I don't know, I think you call it love, probably, you know, so that's where it comes from. Emotion is at the forefront of David's work, and he's not afraid of painting the simple thing, be it a shape, phrase, image or letter. So you don't want to make mistakes, otherwise you're stuck with a big R there. Believe me, this black is intense, trying to get rid of it. That's how it works, anyway. The youngest of three boys, Spiller was brought up in tough but memorable times. The feelings from these times figure strongly throughout his work. I think we were pretty poor. It was, it was a great time, it was a great time. I remember sliding down haystacks and having great fun. I mean, because we spent a lot of our time looking for flying saucers in the 50s. We were sure they were up there somewhere, they're going to come to Swanley, you know. <laughs> of all the places in the world they could land, but they were never going to. Another brother and two sisters arrived later, and with a father away during the war, David felt for his mother Rose and the hardship she faced. But his ability to escape the current reality using a vivid imagination was already in full flow. It's just the freshness of it and actually the madness of doing it. I wonder whether so, that you actually owe it to people to be a bit crazy and just to try things. Yeah, I was always in the A class and things like that. I, I, and I enjoyed, I loved school. School was where you got books and stories. And sometimes I used to get into trouble because I'd sit at the back of the school and if it was a, a journey up the... Uh, Congo rivers or something, I, I'd, I'd be in the back rowing like this and having the whole class in laughing and getting sent out. And... Oh boy. So far, as I know, it's, it's going to be just these marks. So I think what happens is I will probably scrub them right down on a white or something and start again on them until I get them right. Yeah, I've got to make something that makes me happy with it, then I'll figure other people would be happy with it. But uh, at the moment, it's just a... Uh, it's uh, a nothing. It's just... Uh, I like these colours. I like the white on the sort of... Uh, on the sort of light ochre of the canvas. I can go back and do some writing. David's artistic ability and studious side won him a place at art school, where the gritty aspect to his childhood continued under Frank Auerbach's teaching. We had an afternoon of painting with Frank, and uh, he put us on the roof of uh, this flat roof of uh, the art, one of the buildings, and uh, it was cold. It was snowing, in fact, and uh, I only had these uh, powder colours, and so the paintings were just running, and... Uh, and I said, oh, Frank, look, they're running. They're running. And he said, well, work faster. David honed a style that has become his own. He got his first big break selling work in Cologne at a time when the London market fell flat. His art developed using an affinity with music alongside a growth in the use of text together with visually familiar characters. That was what Mickey Mouse gave me. And that was really because my brother used to show them to me on a little projector. Um, and they were, they were something that I knew. So I turned to the things I knew. Uh, uh, it just, you know, I was always singing. Uh, why so why not bring that into it? Spiller spent the 80s living and working in Berlin and New York, the era of punk music and graffiti. 
By the 90s, his work was shown alongside Andy Warhol and Eve Klein, and he'd been taken on by the Twinings Gallery in New York. Other big-name galleries followed suit across Europe. All this at a time when the UK market remained locked in tradition. His art represented the bold and beautiful, just like Van Gogh and Picasso, who he so admired. Actually, it comes from a long line of doing it. And I, I think it really was about the cinema. Outside our cinema, they always had these uh, things where they shoved the letters along, told you what movie it was on. I like the song and whatever, and that, but it's really about the colour, making colours, making them go behind things or on front of them. The final stage of paintings is the part when David throws everything up into the air and adds his own messages, layers of paint, shapes and drawings into the mix. It's, it's making something come alive over the surface and it's, uh, and it's quite hard because, you know, there's, there's every, everything you can think of to say has been said before. There's nothing new. In every way, I'm lost. That's quite good, and that's quite a good one. That's me just saying that. Whatever you do, you're lost. And you've got to find some way out of it. And even if it was like, maybe I'm going to start doing it, going down through the lines again. Like, oh, I got stuck there. I'll have to go round there. <laughs> that's really good. It's like, they're like bricks when you start building, aren't they? I, I really like to make good, a good painting. But at the same time, there's a bit of me, it's like, I don't know, maybe, I, I, I can't say like rebellious, but, you know, I, I, I like the idea of the wild street. I'd rather walk on that one, like you would in the song, always walk on the bright side, you know. And uh, you should be where you are, I don't need to tell you. Nothing. David offers up a combination of universal messages alongside private thoughts. By underlining the value of things in his work, he's appealing to his audience to reconnect with what's important in the journey of life. Well, I've had enough of that one. It's done. Yeah? Is that okay? Say something, woman. It's lovely. It's lovely. That's what I need to hear. Just what I need to hear. <laughs>